just lift up our hands to him today, giving him everything that we are. Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Match this love and beauty in this world. Nothing in this world will satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Sing this with me. Your presence is heaven to me. With your hearts today. Your presence is heaven. days on earth I will away the moment that I see you face to face cause nothing in this world will satisfy but Jesus you're the cup that won't run dry nothing this world will satisfy but Jesus you're the cup that won't run dry Jesus you're the cup that won't run dry the almighty God for another day. This is the Bible study discussion for Elim City Sunyane. For the past one month, a pastor has been talking about a certain topic. And this evening, we want to continue with the discussion. You can watch us on YouTube 
or Facebook Elim City Sinyane. This evening I have with me, as usual, Mr. Carl Mensa and uh, I'm Lucy Pevinyako to do the discussions. Viewers, we want to feel your presence. So send your questions, comments, and whatever you have through the Facebook. Before we continue, let me acknowledge the good works of our senior pastor, Pastor Dr. Gospel Odami Kento. It's his sermons that we've been discussing so far. Before we come to today's discussion, last week, there was a question that we couldn't answer. So we want to look at it, and then we'll continue with the discussion. Carl, can you talk about the question? Okay. Uh, once again, we'd like to thank our viewers for tuning in today. Uh, someone posted a question last week, but the time was up, so we couldn't answer. And she said, her name is Philippa Entry. She said, um, what if I have an abusive husband and I've done all I can but yet he is still at his game what is he supposed to do is that not it what is she supposed to do okay. uh, when we talk of abuse there are several kinds of abuse it can be emotional it can be physical if it's emotional abuse then we will advise that you see a counselor somebody to assist you to go through whatever you are going through but if it's physical abuse, in fact, the first thing is to preserve life. If whatever the man is doing is having effect on your life, then you have to report the person to the police. Uh, secondly, I also suggest that maybe you ask for a separation, but not a divorce. The separation will give you time to also pray and seek the face of God. When we say separation, uh, you stay at one place, the man will stay at a different place. So you don't stay together for him to be beating you every day or all the time. So whilst you are there, you also pray and ask God to help you. Uh, Carl, I don't know if you have something to add. Okay. Uh, abusive husbands, normally, um, I've come across people who normally, or uh, let's say on social media, you find out that people are, be are being abused, especially like women. You don't often see men being abused, but normally it's the me, uh, the girls that or the women that are abused. When they abuse them. them, they don't come out to say it because <laughs> they are they, they are they are ashamed, ashamed of it. Uh, it's not quite pleasant. <laughs> uh, last time I watched a video of a, a little child being abused by the father, mm. and the woman came out to say that that's what has been happening to her for some time. They met after school, and then they uh, they were they were there for some time. Because of the abuse, she had to separate from the man, and then later on the child suffered the consequences of the. Uh, it's, it's, it's too bad. It's yeah, too bad. And I believe that most what we have to do is that uh, Dr. Gospel once, when he was having a marriage seminar, told us that marriage magnifies the attitude of people and the habits of people. That's right. If you are married to him, if you, you are caught in a man who normally tells you, uh, uh, maybe if you are not careful, what I'll do to you and tries to hit you and maybe say, hmm, you, I'll get you and next you time. There. And you still stay <laughs> When you get married, know that it will not be if if it were not God. Maybe the next time he's going to hit you because that time he knows that what he's, he's wanting all, he's been wanting all this time, he's had it. So nothing is going to stop him. It will magnify his attitude. It's, it will magnify his habit of the things that he's been doing. So I'll urge our Christian brothers and sisters to try and get closer or try and, and, and let's say fall in love with our brothers and sisters, our Christian brothers and sisters, our believers. Because in doing that, you will go through counseling. All these things will come up, and I believe that uh, it so, will resolve some of the issues. Thank you very much. Um, in Pastor's introduction today, he was saying that it happens to us all the time, most of the times, in our jobs, in our marriages, in our health. It comes to a point that w w w it's like enough is enough. We cannot take it anymore. So let me quit. Let me uh, 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 give up. The topic we've been looking at is when I feel like giving up. When I feel like giving up. And it has been happening to us. So he was just advising us that when we meet our challenges, the solution is not to quit. Well, that's what we, most of us think. That, oh, let me quit. Let me end. That's not the solution. The solution is to edge on and win. 
and become a finisher. Become a finisher. So um, whatever we are doing, we should try and finish it. And is that one the most important reason why we are not able to finish is discouragement. When we are discouraged, we want to quit. But he said, no, we need to deal with the discouragement. Whatever is discouraging us, we need to deal with it. So he made reference to the previous sermons talking about the cure, the, the causes, the causes of discouragement. And if you know the causes, then you will find the solution or the cure to them. And he said fatigue, that is tiredness, frustration, failure, and fear are the things he mentioned as the causes. And he also gave a small account of the in Nehemiah chapter 4, the background of the Nehemiah chapter 4. I'm sure last week we, we talked about it. It's about Nehemiah uh, and his people coming out from captivity to Jerusalem and they decided to rebuild the wall of Jerusalem. After they built the wall to halfway, uh, the, the Bible says that they, they became tired. They became frustrated. So they just, they were discouraged and told themselves that they cannot finish. So they should end it. Now, he talked about the cure. The two cures to uh, fatigue and frustration that we looked at last week. Last week, we said the fatigue, that is tiredness. If you are tired, rest. That is the best solution. Find time to rest. And the frustration, he said, we should reorganize our lives. Reorganize your health. Reorganize your job. Reorganize your marriage. Whatever it is, whether it's a project or uh, whatever it is. Last week, somebody said something, and it touched me so much, that if you are going to reorganize or you are going to change something, change the method, but, but don't, don't, don't change your vision. If you continue changing your vision and your dreams, you won't have any... I think it's a bit there. Yeah. 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 Yes. So if you think it's a method that is not good, the methodology, change it and take something better. Today we are going to look at the cure to the two other causes. One is failure. Cure to failure. Um, let's, let's watch the clip, what Pastor Gospel said is the cure to failure. One of the ways for you to overcome failure is to remember the Lord. Refocus. Focus on God. Remember the Lord. The Lord has helped us in years past. The psalmist said, He is our help in ages past. I hope for years to come. He's helped us past, but he's also helping us present and he will help us in the future. He doesn't change. So when you are encountering a problem, don't forget about what he, he's helped you with in the past. Remember, remember, set your eyes on God. Refocus on God. Let us remember the goodness of God. Let's remember the greatness of God. Let's remember that God is powerful. What pastor is saying is if you fail you don't quit. And he said everybody fails. Everybody. Even people who have been successful in life. They also fail. So if you fail you don't quit. But you do something. Uh, what did you get from, from that sermon? From the sermon pastor was saying that when we fail we should refocus our mind on God. Remember, he said, remember God. If you fail, remember God. You don't stop. So let's see what Nehemiah did in Nehemiah 4.14. 4, Nehemiah 4.14. 4, Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 14. Mm. And I read. And I looked and I rose up and I said unto the nobles and to the rulers and to the rest of the people, be not ye afraid of them. Remember the Lord, which is great and terrible and fight for your brethren your sons and your daughters your wives and your houses so from the verse you realize that Nehemiah looked at the situation assessed the situation and then remembers that no we need to remember God I remember pastor saying that even if you have to restart restart whatever you are doing but remember 
God is very, very important. You do analysis of the situation, the failure, and then you go back to God. He said we should fix our eyes on God. Fix your eyes on God. Um, can, you, can you say something about the cure? Okay, Mama Lucy, uh, most of the time, failure is bound to happen in life. Okay. And I've realized that failure makes us stronger. Okay. Thomas Edison, like I said last time, when he failed so many times, he was asked, and he said, I didn't fail. I realized 10,000 ways that the, the bulb does not work. So he realized that if I do it this way, it won't, it won't work. work. That is what he said he to comfort himself. from his failure. Yes, and he said that so many people have turned their backs and have given up just at the door of their breakthrough. Uh, our own Michael Jordan, a great basketball player, he said that he has, he has missed 9,000 shots. He has lost 300 games. He has been entrusted with 26 match-winning shots, mm -hmm. but yet he missed, <laughs> so he team, his team lost. But he didn't give up. He said he has failed over and over again, and that is why he's successful. Meaning that if he had given up after losing all those, those matches and losing all those shots, if it were, be, it were to be somebody who doesn't have hope in God, he would, he, he would be devastated and he would lose hope. Remember Peter, when he was sinking, what did he do after for a moment he was walking on the water just like Jesus Christ was doing later on he paid attention to the, uh, the storms and those represent the failures the in our lives yes the environment yeah. the failures in our lives Jesus asked him to come he shifted his focus from God and that is when he experienced failure and what happened when he experienced failure Jesus told him to focus on him and he drew him up until they were translated to the other side so this encourages us pastor is trying to tell us to refocus our, our minds remember the Lord, remember that he is the only one who can bring us out of our failure if you do not focus, refocus your mind on God and you keep on saying that well I can do it on my own, uh, you are bound to fail. fail to be frank, you are bound to fail he, he says something like, life is not about winning, winning, winning so you, you fail in certain things and one thing he said I was so happy about, he said good things, uh, bad things happen to good people but under normal circumstances Bad things shouldn't happen to good people. If the person is good, good things should happen to the person. But you realize that good people, bad things happen to them. They also fail. And when you fail, you don't give up. Look up to God. Uh, I was watching a life story of a 21-year-old girl who decided to end his life, her life. He wanted to, she wanted to kill herself. So they asked her, why, why do you want to kill yourself? Then he said, I have failed. I have failed in life. I was living with my foster parents. And when I was five years old, my foster father abused me. And, and the abuse was going on for a long time. So he ran away. she ran away from the house. And she was just living on the streets. Then at the age of 11, she realized that she can sell her private part to get money. So she entered into prostitution. And, and he was on hard drugs. And she said that it's like nobody cares about her. Nobody loves her. She has failed. She wanted to be a lawyer. Now, 21-year-old person, she has never even been to school. How can you be a lawyer? So she has failed, and that's why she wanted to end up her life. What is happening to you? What have you failed in life? Such that you want to end your life. What has disappointed you so much? We, we, we also have our own stories to tell. But what Pastor is saying is that don't quit. Don't quit. Remember God. Go back to God. The psalmist says something in Psalm 119 verse 25. Psalm 119 verse 25. He said, I am laid low in the dust. Preserve my life according to your word. Preserve my life according to your word. And, and that is the psalmist saying. He also remember. If you say you are low in dust, then you are dead. <laughs> you are dead. But he said God should preserve his life. Remember God. A pastor um, used Jonah also as an example. Uh, can you brief us something what he said about Jonah? Pastor said uh, when you read 
Jonah chapter 2 verse 7. Mm -hmm. He was saying that after he was swallowed by the fish, that is when he realized that he had to cry and remember God. He said, and I remembered the Lord. Most of the times when we are, when we are uh, uh, um, in trouble, we tend to run away from God. We don't go to God with our troubles. And those who come to God with their troubles want a, a, a sharp sharp, Jehovah sharp sharp. Yes. They want a, a, an answer or a solution to their troubles sharp sharp as soon as possible. Um, you saying bad things happen to good people like pastor said mm. takes my mind to a video that I watched a group of nurses were going to Bosomtre Lake Bosomtre for an excursion and the unfortunate happened oh. they had an accident and oh. they were all taken out but there was this particular nurse who was entrapped under the bus so she kept on saying why me why me why me and I said wow what a question why me she was, she was asking God why me and I was saying, so what a selfish, uh, uh, let's say, thoughts. So what a selfish thought. So you should happen to someone, too. or yeah. maybe you should be a group. Under that, under, you don't know what. <laughs> it's, it's really funny. funny when we find ourselves in trouble and we ask ourselves, why me? Why me? Why not you? Why should it be me? <laughs> maybe, and we, we have to remember that as believers, no troubles come to us that we cannot bear. Every trouble that comes to you. Um, uh, there was this uh, uh, broadcaster, a TV broadcaster, who was laid off during this COVID 19 period. She came out to social media and told her fans that, um, well, I have a bad news and I have a good news. The bad news is that mm -hmm. I've been laid off from work. Okay. But the good news is that it's an opportunity for God to show his glory. <laughs> it's an opportunity for God to show his glory. And I, I, was, I was so amazed by that. How many people will go, will who, go to that extent and to say that. that? So if you read Jonah chapter 2 verse 7, he said, when my life was slipping away, I remembered you. And in your holy temple, you heard my prayer. What has swallowed you? Jonah, it was fish. By you, it may be something else. Maybe poverty. Maybe sickness. Maybe something else. Your business is not going on well. Something has swallowed you. In the midst of that, Jonah remembered God. So let's also remember God. If we remember God. Jonah said, God heard his prayers from his holy temple. God is still is in his holy temple. Well, we have a comment go, here. Go to him. We have a comment pray. here. He, he uh, Nana Boache said, <laughs> we cannot do away with failure. It's part of us. We just need to remain focused. Just remain focused on your dreams and when the failure comes, you still tend to the Lord and you, you'll be successful. Thank you, Nana. Thank you very much. I remember Pastor also saying that the difference between successful and unsuccessful people is successful people don't give up. Yes. So that is what Nana is they trying to they say. Don't yeah, they don't quit. <laughs> they move on. They move on. Let's look at the second um, cause and then the cure. It's fear. Fear. Today, Pastor talked about fear as a cause of discouragement. But there's an antidote to that. Let's listen to what Pastor said. And we'll continue with the discussion. Don't give up. Don't fear. Resist it. Fight it. When they said no, don't roll back and go and sleep. Oh, they said no. Go back, press in. Sometimes in persistence, we get our results. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. He said, don't give up. Don't give up. <laughs> <laughs> to the antidote to fear is say resist resist James chapter 4 verse 7 it says that we should resist the devil and he will do what? flee from us so resist don't quit don't quit don't give up and he continue hammer that don't oppose the situation whatever that fear is um, the sermon is advising us to face it let's face our fears Let's face our challenges. And, and uh, uh, I, I, have, I have an example of my life. At a point in life, I was facing a challenge. And I thought that relocating from where I was staying would help me. So I relocated in order to run away from <laughs> my challenges. But where I went, it didn't keep long. And I faced a bigger and a serious challenge. So I advised myself, why not come back 
and rather face the previous challenge because that one was a lesser one. So I had to come back and face it. And behold, uh, with God, I won. I won. So uh, he's advising us not to run away from our fears, but to face it with, 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 with the help of God, we will win. win. Um, tell us something you heard about the cure to fear. You know, uh, resisting the devil means you should actively fight against the devil and he will flee from you. <laughs> Most of the times, like you said, we, 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 he, pastor was making an illustration that when we go to the workplace, maybe new in the workplace, we start working and somebody intimidates us. Somebody is always on our neck. Sometimes we want to run away. In church, we face the same thing. Some brethren will come to church. They are involved in the ministry. Perhaps they are leaders and then their members intimidate them a little and they want to run away. What happens? And they want to leave and go to a different church. Do you know where you are going? In married to the same thing. Your spouse begins to torment you a little, <laughs> not actually uh, uh, physically abusing you, but a little, uh, a little uh, problem, a little misunderstanding. You are running like, away. You are not the right person. I want to run away. Do you know whom you are going to marry the next? Do you know whom you are going to marry the next? You don't know how the person's character is. He can appear as an angel. So sometimes it pays to face your fears. Like you said, you didn't run away. You just decided, you, you had the thought of relocating, but later on you thought that, no, I have to be no, I have where to I am. Back. I have to face my fear. He also made an illustration that uh, most of the time, dogs normally sense your fear and they pound on you per your fear. And it's, it's really true. I used to be afraid of dogs that, that much. But I realized that whenever you turn your back, it's like you have given a chance to the dog to, to, to run to after you. To pursue you. Yeah. Yes. Just as the devil and does. And it's that we are supposed to resist the devil, not turn our backs. Remember that uh, uh, the weapon, our uh, armor, we don't have anything covering our back. We only have things covering our front. So we have to turn, face the devil, confront our fears, and actively fight against our fears. I believe that in so doing, we will be successful. Okay. Nehemiah says something in Nehemiah 4, chapter 4, verse 14b. He said, Don't be afraid of your enemies. Being a leader, he realized that his people were afraid of the enemies. So he advised them, don't be afraid of your enemies. And, and that encouraged the people to, to, to move on. And Job said something. And since I read that verse, I've been very, very careful about the things I fear. Job chapter 3 verse 25. He said, what I was afraid of has come upon me. What I was afraid of has come. So what you are afraid of, if you don't face it and you run, it will pursue you like Job and it came upon him so it's better you don't, you don't run away face it face your fears and win um, pastor gave an illustration of uh, Goliath Goliath was asking for a man to fight with a man and, and Israelites gave him a boy a boy so pastor was trying to let us understand that sometimes there are some of the things that we fear they are not even two big 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 ones who very little, little, little things can, can put fear in us. And you are asking for a man, they gave you a boy, and you couldn't fight the boy. What about if they had given you a man? <laughs> so the things that, that we are afraid of, sometimes they are not big, big things. The devil is, is much aware that, oh, if I bring this one, this one, the person will, will overcome this one. So you go and bring very little, little things. And if you are not careful, they are the things that will put so much fear in you and, and, and you won't be able to stand. Uh, and um, I believe that our fears gives the devil strategies. Yes. If no. you should have a particular fear, I know that has happened to me. There are things that I've feared. I've feared and thought that if this thing should come upon me, how am I going to survive? And you find out that I give the devil a strategy and he later opposes me with that. Yes. And I end yes. up have to confront uh, to confront it because it's already happened. What do I do? I just have to turn to the Lord and 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 try to confront my fears. It's it's something. Our mind our mind is very powerful, <laughs> and the devil's uh, uh, schemes are things that suggest devilish things. And uh, uh, we give him strategies when we think when we think evil. It gives him strategies, and we have to learn to confront our fears. We have to learn that. You see, he the devil attack, uh, attacks us through our weaknesses, where he thinks you are weak. That is where he will attack you. So we shouldn't give him the chance to do so. Uh, there's something in Galatians 6, 9. 
Galatians 6, 9. He said that, don't get tired of helping others. You will be rewarded when the time is right, if you don't give up. So, there's someone who said that, don't give up, don't give up, don't give up. If you don't give up and you pursue and you win, you'll be rewarded. So, brethren, let's put this in, in mind and focus. Acts chapter 20 verse 24 says something. I don't know whether you can uh, say something there. Paul says something. Says something in Acts 20, 24. Uh, verse 24. He sa- yeah, yeah. Paul said, but none of these things move me. Neither count my life dear unto myself so that I, m- I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Yeah. Paul is saying something here that I don't care what happens. I don't care. So long as I finish. What was before Paul? What was he trying to finish? According to the verse. Uh, Carl, can you say something? He, he had something in mind. He had an objective to finish something. And he said that he doesn't care about what happens to him. He doesn't care uh, 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 whether they will, they will jail him or whatever. But he has a focus of finishing something. You see, we are, we've all been called into a ministry. Paul realized that the ministry of God upon him was to bring uh, uh, the gospel of grace to the Gentiles. And that was his assignment. Mm-hmm. And he had to finish. If okay. Paul hadn't done that, I, I don't think you and I would have been here by now. Because the Jews would have taken the whole thing and we would have missed it. But because he was set aside to do that ministry, he said that he doesn't care whatever happens. He doesn't care whatever a, a, a shipwreck that is he's going to face. Whatever goes on, he still needs to confront his fear. He still needs to face his fear. So, he, his, his whole ambition was to complete no matter the fear he faced. I think, Marlis, there's, uh, there's uh, Abi Dabia, <laughs> our, our, our number one <laughs> <I'll> <laughs> viewer, <be> again. <laughs> says, let's stand and face our fears no matter what. She has learned to stand <laughs> and face her fears. That means that no matter what she's going through, she will stand and face her fear. Abi, thank you very much. <laughs> this evening, I don't know what you are afraid of. Listeners, I don't know. What are you afraid of? Um, Let's do an exercise at home. Just cast back your mind and and go through your life. List all your fears and determine that henceforth you are going to face them with the help of God. But you not run away from your fears. If if, if you run away, uh, we are saying that they will uh, pursue you. Um, Carl mentioned something that what Paul went through to fulfill his dreams or finish whatever he said before him has also benefited us. In most cases, if you're able to face your fears and overcome, it doesn't help you alone, but it goes on to help other people. It goes on to, to assist other people. It benefits other people, not, not you alone. So if you are standing to face your challenges, if you are standing to face your fears, it, 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 it helps you and it can also help others. It can also encourage people. Sometimes, sometimes people get to know God through our behavior, through the life that we are living. If people are living with you and the way you face your fears and you overcome, it encourages others to also overcome or to also face their fears. That I, even last time, um, I know Mr. Carmensa, this thing happened to him. But you know, he came out as what and what and what. So, uh, me too, I can do that. I can also do that. Let me also focus and also win. Um, as our time is running down, let's see. Is there any question, comments for us okay, to consider? There's another comment from Rebecca Carl. Okay. Hmm. She said, it's not easy. <laughs> We need the strength of God to keep on fighting. Uh, Nana Bwachi has also sent another comment saying that, for me, I believe fear is in the mind, not the heart. So to overcome failure, fill your thoughts with positive things and with the help of God, 
you overcome. Thank you, thank you, Nana. Um, looking at coming to the conclusion of the discussion, um, Carl, can you say something? Today we have learned two very important things. We have come to a, a understanding that failure and then fear are bound to happen in life. But wh what happens when they come? When you fail, you should know that you have to refocus on God. Okay. God is the only one who can redirect you. And when you face fear, you don't have to run away. Resist it. Fight against it. As believers, we have been equipped. We have been given the power to overcome fear. We have been given the power to overcome failure. So don't don't think you're a failure. I know you and I have been given the power to You are a winner. Yeah, winner. You are a winner. You are a champion. <laughs> champion. So we shall become champions in, in, very soon. Please, let's listen to the conclusion of um, Pastor's sermon. There's, there's a clip. Let's listen to that and then. I encourage you to have a heart of a finisher. Rest if you are fatigued. Reorganize if you are frustrated. Resist if you are in failure. Remember the Lord if you are afraid and all things will be well because God wants to give you a chance again our God is good and I pray that I will see people who know no defeat people who rise above every head of people who jump every wall people who run through every troop and get to their destination your mark may be the mountains it may not be in the valley but keep climbing don't relent keep resting and get there so you can wave the victory banner so that heavens will cheer you and applaud you. God bless you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you for the conclusion, Pastor. He said, we have been encouraged to, to me, I've been encouraged to edge on. I've been encouraged not to be afraid of anything. And also, I've been encouraged to know that I'm a finisher because God is a finisher. If you read Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, he says that he's, he's a starter, he's the author, and also finisher of our faith. So once I know that my God is a finisher, I have to remember him, and he should help me to finish. Uh, Pastor said we should continue to believe and trust in God. Don't listen to the stories of people. When you are going through things, people tell you a whole lot of stories. Focus. Remember God and be a finisher. Remember that God is is a finisher. God this a evening, finisher. <laughs> let me say thank you to Mr. Abe and is, it, is a, this is a, a lady? Yeah, she. A lady. Yeah. Oh, she, she. Abe, thank you very much for listening and your contribution. Thank you, viewers. The, we have regular people who have been sending comments and, and questions and those things. God bless you so much for watching us. Uh, Mr. Carmen, sir, thank you so much for being present here. My able media people, I say I love you. Your I love you all. Your producer, Pastor the produce, Morgan. <laughs> producer <laughs> is Pastor Morgan. Pastor, thank you very much for your contribution. Thank you all for assisting us and making the discussion superb. God bless you all for listening to us. Come next week, Sunday, 7 p.m., live, YouTube, come Facebook, LM City, Sunyani, we do. God bless you. Bye bye. We just lift up our hands to Him today, giving Him everything that we are. Is like you, Lord, in all the earth.